Please, you may be seated. Again, it's a wonderful pleasure to be here. I do not take it for granted that, that I have the singular honor to minister the word of God to you today. I want to specially appreciate my host, uh, Pastor Diodine and Pastor Miriam. We're grateful to God for your lives and the great work that God is doing through you. Uh, we're also grateful to God for all the leaders of this house. Thank you for the great work that you are doing. I sense in my spirit that there's a cloud upon this church. A cloud. And it's about to rain. Hallelujah. Mm. And I'm persuaded that it's going to, I mean, the, the kind of rain uh, is the type you haven't seen before. You know, when you, when you, praise God. When you take time to celebrate God in Thanksgiving like this, you are populating the cloud. And the Bible mm. says in Ecclesiastes 11 and verse number 3, uh, it says, when the clouds are full, they empty themselves upon their own. I believe something is about to be emptied upon this house. In the precious name of Jesus. I want to salute all the men and women of God here present. What a joy to be in company of people, apostolic leaders from around, yeah, from around the world. Uh, it's such a pleasure for me to be in your midst. I count it a great privilege. You, you know, this is a time that you have to appraise yourself like the Apostle Paul. When he seemed intimidated by other apostles. He, he asked himself, am I also an apostle? And he answered himself, say yes. <laughs> He said, I didn't see Jesus face to face. But I had my own encounter. On the road to Damascus. <laughs> so I'm an apostle as well. <laughs> Somebody tell your neighbor, say you are an apostle. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, let's get into the word of God. Psalm 67. Verse 5 and 6. I want to start tonight from a thought from that verse. The Bible says, let the people praise you, O God, let the people praise you. Yeah, he said, the Lord our God will bless us. The earth will yield our increase to us. Uh, he said that the earth mm -hmm. will yield an increase to us. Ngo isi irimbu kivyo mviro vyayo. And then the Lord our God will bless us. Ngo kandi mana ya achu izodu humugisha. So there's something about praise. Harikinu gifatanya nugu tazira. And thanksgiving. Gifatanya nugu shima. That leads to fruitfulness. Kizani vyamna. Where the earth will yield an increase. Aho isi itangura kuimburuka. So I am fully persuaded that increase is coming upon you because of your sense of gratitude. Let me uh, uh, quickly say one or two things. I know the theme for the Thanksgiving night is about the hammer of God. The armor of God. The but you know, last night, Pastor uh, uh, 
Julian did a powerful job. With the word that she brought. On the authority of the believer. And we know that that we have authority in Christ. So the devil cannot harass us. We take our authority over the devil. We are like the centurion in Matthew chapter 8. When you read from verse 5. The, the centurion had an encounter with Jesus. He said, I know you are a man under authority. Uh, he said, I am also a man under authority. I have soldiers under me. I said to one, go and go. And I said to another, come and come. I said, my servant is at home. And he's sick. Speak the word only. And my servant will be healed. Because I know demons respect your word. So speak the word only. <laughs> Somebody, I want you to know tonight that you have authority. Your mouth will no longer be shut. As you speak, demons will move. As you speak, sicknesses will move. So you know that I know that the devil is not really your problem. If you understand your authority in Christ, you just need to speak. And the, the devil will, will flee. Now, the devil understands that you and I, when we recognize our authority in Christ, and we put on the old armor of God, it doesn't have any power over us. What he has is tricks. Each fisse no bugungi changa mayeri to play tricks on our mind. Agira geza kugiru bugungi kufdi unviro vyawe. A true mature believer. Omo Krista madze gukura should not be afraid of demons. Na kuye guti nyaba demon. But a true mature believer. Omo Krista ukuri amadze gukura should be careful. Yara kuye kumenya chane about the tricks of the devil. And that's where I want to dwell on tonight. You know, in 7 Corinthians chapter 2, and verse number 11, it says, lest Satan should take advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his device. Devices mean strategy. The tricks that the devil plays on our mind. When he has come to understand that he doesn't have authority over us. Now, now that does not mean that not people under the authority of the devil. I'm only jacking you up that you should come off that authority. And act on the word that uh, Pastor Julia preached yesterday. So you understand that you are the bride of Christ. And you can. So if you were not here yesterday, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Go, go and get the message. <laughs> but if you understand what she taught yesterday, the only thing you are left with is to understand that the devil has strategy. He loves to play on people's minds. 
so that believers can be stranded. You know you can have authority in Christ. But you may not know the next thing to do. That means you lack wisdom. So you need to add to your authority the wisdom of God. Pure wisdom that comes from above because God is willing to give you. Ephesians 6 and verse 11 he says put on the, all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. So it's very important that you and I understand that. Now, if you see a believer that is stranded, it's not always because the devil is powerful. It may just be because the believer does not understand a few things. And I want to expand on that. Now, there are two things that are very fundamental in life that every believer must pay attention to. And that's that God will never leave you with nothing. Every human being has a seed. Because God created this earth to run on the platform of seed and harvest. Let me quickly read Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. We'll read from 26 to 28 of Genesis chapter 1. Praise God. Genesis 1 and verse 26. The Bible says, then God said, let us make man in our image, mm. according to our likeness. Mm. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the bird of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Mm. So God created man in his image, and in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea mm. and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that lives on the earth. Can I read? Yeah, go ahead. Mirongi vini naga tanda tu. Imani ravugiti, turemu mono mishusho yachu, asenatwe. Aganza mafio mukiaga, nibi guru kamu kirere, nibi tungano, ni siyose, ni vji kwega vjose, bigenda bi kwega inda hasi. No kwimani remu mono mishusho yachu. Mishusho yi imana ni hoya muremye. Irema abantu bo buryo bubiri. Mazi imana irabahezagira iti ni murondoke mugwire, mwuzurisi, muyiganze. Mugaba mafio mukiyaga nibiguruka mukirere nibifise ubugingo vyose bigenda genda kwisi. Amen. Why will God tell man to be fruitful if he doesn't have capacity to be fruitful? Ni kubera iki imana yabwiye umuntu arondoke cyangwa yigwize nimba umuntu atarafise muri we ico kintu cyo kwigwiza cyangwa cyo kurondoka. God is too faithful to tell you to do what you cannot do. Imana numwizi gigo kubugi dashaka kukubwira ukora ibintu dashoboye gukora. If he says you should do something that means you can do it. Iyi kubwiye ukora iki nuko yabonye ko ico kintu ushoboye kugikora. So any kind of barrenness or lack of fruitfulness Mm. It's, it's not of God. He said, be fruitful. That's assuming that you already have the seed. Yes. <laughs> because there's no fruit without seed. Bless <laughs> Yeah. If God says be fruitful, 
It means you already have the seed that will produce the fruit. For there to be fruit, there has to be seed. So I'm a seed carrier. So I can Hallelujah. be fruitful. I want you to look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you are a seed carrier. Hallelujah. Tell somebody I say you are a seed carrier. Say you are full of seed. So you don't have a choice than to be fruitful. Glory be to God. The first tangible instruction, I said the first real instruction that God gave Abraham as a matter of the covenant was the instruction to change location. Genesis chapter 12. Follow me carefully. I'm going somewhere. He said, leave your country and your kindred and go to a place that I will show you. And I will make your name great. You know, and you and all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This is where I'm going, ladies and gentlemen. There's something about seed and space. Without each or both of them, you can't make progress in life. God is the God of sea. And he creates space for your sea. So that you can be fruitful. Can I pray for somebody here tonight? Whatever may have limited your space. Whatever may have limited your expression. It comes to an end this season. In the name of Jesus. Oh, somebody say better amen Hallelujah. So to enjoy increase of fruitfulness, you need to recognize your seed and find space for your seed. Come on. As human beings, we have been created for space. From the womb to the tomb. Man is always looking for space. When there's no womb, the seed of man cannot survive in a womb. When the womb is blocked, the seed will die in the womb. So from the conception of man, man needs space. It is in that space that man starts to grow. Whatever contends for your space is contending for your destiny. I have come tonight to to release somebody into their space. In the name of Jesus Christ. May nothing limit your space again. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Glory to God. I'm excited. That God is about to open up somebody's destiny. destiny. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm so excited. Because what I'm emphasizing here tonight, if you listen carefully, under this anointing, something is going to break loose in your life. I said something is going to break loose in your life. God wants to give somebody mental space. You 
Your mm. mind is too cluttered. From tonight, you are going to start to think clearly. You know, like the same computer, mm -hmm. we want to format your hard drive. Hallelujah. <laughs> so all the bitterness and unforgiveness <laughs> and, and, and bad emotion, <laughs> we're going to format them out by the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. We burn them out in the name of Jesus. May your mind be clear for new ideas. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. You know, when somebody is mismanaging destiny, it's because they don't know what they have. Can I give you a case in study? The guy called Esau in the Bible. The son of Isaac. The man of the covenant. Esau had a birthright. That was the covenant seed for his destiny. But he missed his destiny. Because he underestimated the seed that he had. And in Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible described him. In verse number 13. He said, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, which cause trouble, and by this uh, many become defiled. I said, lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau who for a morsel of food sold this batteries. Many people are selling their batteries today. Because they don't understand their seed. Two major reasons, like I said, why people are stranded in life. Not recognizing your seed and lack of space for your seed. Not recognizing your seed, and lack of space for your seed. Seed and space are very important. Esau lost mind of his seed. And he gave it to Jacob. What are you giving out this season? May, may you not sell your birthrights. Space is useless without seed. And seed is useless without space. Can I say that one more time? I said space is useless without seed. And seed is useless without space. Well, where you understand the two together. You'll understand that God already set you up to succeed in life. Come on. So everyone has a seed. But every, not everyone has space. Everybody carries seed. But not everyone has space. Can you remember the prophecy of Isaiah? In Isaiah 54. When you read from verse 1. He said, sing, O barren. 
Sorry. Sing over. As I was prophesying to a barren woman. He says, sing over. Why? Because you carry seed. He said, cry aloud, you who have not born. He said, for many are the children of the desolate woman than the children of the, of, of the fruitful mother. Yeah. Now he now started to give instruction. He said, lending your cord, strengthen your stake, and light the place of your dwelling. Let them stretch out the curtains of your habitation. He said, for you shall yet expand to the left and to the right. Isaiah said, your problem is space. You already have seed. <laughs> you already have seed. I pray over somebody here today. You will no longer be stranded. You will no longer lack space. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Say amen, somebody. Amen. But before I land on that issue very well, let's examine how the devil play on people's mind concerning their seed. Many years ago, this was uh, 2010. I went to the nation of Liberia. I went to inaugurate you know, a, a church uh, that we were sponsoring. And, uh, yeah. A young man, his son in the ministry, was a uh, local. He planted a church. He planted a church. And and we were sponsoring the church and covering the church. So I visited. Uh, uh, the major county called the Magibi County. What you Magibi County. Magibi County. Yes, a place. Yes, a place. Yes, it was around Monrovia, where okay. the capital city is. The night before the meetings would start, I decided to just walk around mm. the city. And I saw many people just walking on the street. So young men. So I will approach some of them. Where are you going? Say nowhere. I'm just walking around. I meet another one. What do you do? Say nothing. So where are you going? I'm not going anywhere. I'm just walking around. After like three or four people, I knew there was a problem in the city. <laughs> because human beings are moving around like evil spirit. Sorry. Like evil spirit. They just, they just walk <laughs> They're just walking to and fro. You know in the book of Job. I know. Yeah, God saw the devil. And said, Where are you going? He said, I'm just going to and fro. I don't have anywhere to <laughs> That was what I saw in Liberia. So I called my protege, my son. What's happening here? And the guy told me, he said, you see, a lot of these young men are disillusioned. They don't know what they're doing. He said, some of them are just coming back from Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso. He said, he said, during the war, they were displaced. And then, uh, some of them were just teenagers when they were displaced. Now, now in their 20s, they're back in the like world. But they've lost a sense of direction. They they don't, don't know what to do. With their yeah. mm. So when you meet a person like that, they cannot recognize their seed. 
This earth can only yield to you based on the seed you put into it. Can I say this to somebody today? As a human being, when you approach the earth, the earth speaks to you. Do you know what he's saying? Come on. He says, don't come to me with your need. Come to me with your seed. The earth is not programmed by God to process need. Come on, bring it. To process need. To process need. Need. Needs of man. Okay. God created the earth to process sea. But, but you have many people who walk around with their needs. I have need. I want to go to school. I need money. I need this and that. I need husband. I need wife. I need a car. I need a house. And the earth is talking to you. Don't bring me your name. Bring me your seed. Because I can only process your seed. I can't do anything with your name. Oh my God. Mm. Burundi, hear me and hear me well. The only way we are going to eradicate poverty in Africa is when every African recognizes their seed. We have so many people carrying their need on their head and walking around talking about their need. The earth is speaking to you. Don't bring me your need. Bring me your seed. When you bring your seed, I will process it for you. And I will bring forth for you. Come on. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Verse 11. Says, so shall my word be that proceed out of my mouth. They shall not return unto you. He said, just like the rain that comes from the that waters the earth, that the earth may bring forth seed and bread for the eater. So you see from the book of Isaiah 55, this earth has been programmed to bring forth seed and bread. Bread for eating, seed for sowing. Oh my God. <laughs> Come we, all, on. we also have people when the earth yields for them, they carry both bread and seed and they eat both. Oh my God. <laughs> so you need to learn to separate your bread but and your seed. But we all came to this earth with seeds. My greatest prayer for somebody here today, is that my God will help you to recognize your seed. Uh, can you say it better? Amen. <laughs> hey. One of the greatest tragedies on earth is for a child of God not to recognize his or seed. The Bible is full Full of situations of people who could not recognize their seed and the ones that recognize their seed. Let me give you some examples. In 1 Kings 17, Elijah the prophet 
Elia wavugishwa n'Imana was sent to a widow in Zarephath. Yarungitswe kumufakazi wi Zarephath. God said go to Zarephath. Imani mumbwira ngo ja i Zarephath. I have commanded a widow to feed you. Nguna tegetse umufakazi kukugaburira. Babu says as Elijah was approaching Zarephath. Elia igihe ari kwaregera kye gisagara ci Zarephath. He saw a widow. Abona umufakazi gathering sticks. Umufakazi ari kwaregera nyudukwi. And then he called the widow. Achara muhamagara. Go make food for me. Gogenda unza nicho fungura. The widow said, "Umufakazi ramugira." I don't have anything. Na na kimi ofisi. It's just a little that I have. Ngo ofisi gusaduke. I'm gonna fix some small meal. Ati harutu nunge gukora guso utko duke ofisi. For my son and I. Kubganja mwe numga na wanje. We eat that. Ngo tu du fungure. And then we die. Hamadu ejele chetu kipfira. The widow did not know. Umufakazi niari amenye. That except you recognize your seed, you get chosen to be in the land. God may not be able to do anything in your life. Iman and Akin and Akin show you go come out of the land. When we pray, you sense it. Prayer is supposed to open our eyes. Ubundu gusenga kuategeza kukugurama so be able to recognize our seed. Kugira ngo meni mbuto fisi. That's why we say watch and pray. Niyama mvu ba vuga ngo ah mchanga zavuga ne zavuga ngo you sengo kukura masu. What are you watching for? Kanuru sengi. Ori kuboniki. You are watching for the things that God wants to use. Wewe uri kura ba if the wino imani yaguha ishora gukore. You are watching for the things that God wants to use. Uri kura ba if the wino bigu kiku ishora gukore. Imani yaguha. You are watching for the thoughts that God will bring. Uri kura ba if the wino bigu kiku imani yaguha. 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 Imani yag he said, "Don't worry about the small that." Aramu kira tinu kiri kiva zokuri tu ya duke warufisi. Go fix something. Banza kwanza gende. Bring me cake to eat. Unhorere aka unhorere utko fungura mutunza nire. I am here to represent God. Jewen dinga ha kuwa nseru kima. As long as I'm here. Igeh chosen dinga ha. If you will bring your seed. Ni wanzani ni mbuto ya. That which you have in the house. If you nyani ufisi muunzu. It will never rot. Ni bidzo fa viara hezi. Second Kings chapter four. Abami ba kabiri kigawane chakani. Another widow in the days of Elisha. Uyundi mufaka zimu misi ya Elisha. The same experience. Haba yevya mindi nene. The widow of the sons of the prophet. Uyomugore, yari mugoro mugaba wiwe, yari mubigishwa, baba fugishwa ba Elisha. Second Kings chapter four and verse one. Abami ba kabiri kigawane chakani mulongo ambere. Met with Elisha the prophet. Ahura nua fugishwa ni mana Elisha. Help me, prophet. Unfasha mu fugishwa wima. My husband is dead. Omugabo wanje yapfuye. I have two sons. Ufisa bahungu babiri. My husband was a righteous man. Omugabo wanje azwe ari umugororotsi. But I did not recognize his seed. Ariko imbuto ziwe umugabo we ntiyigeza zimenya. So he was a poor prophet. Kugivyo yari umuvugishwa umukene. Come on. And he died and did not leave anything behind. Kanda charafata cha sizi. Hey. He died indebted. In ya firiye mu madeni. He was owing money. Iyo yaraheranya amafaranga. And so people are coming to take my sons. It was like praying to God. Because Elisha there, as a servant of God, represents God. Somebody, I come to, I've come to speak to you tonight. God has answered your prayer. Imana yari shuisenge shodiawe. That's why you are here. Niyom hamvuninga ha. And the answer to your prayer is this. Kandi inyi shuisenge shodiawe ni. What do you have in your house? Mbega we munzu ya ofisiki. What do you have in your house? We munzu ya ofisiki. This woman approached Elijah. Uyu mugore yegera Elisa. Prophet, help me. Arama ti mufugi shwa fasha. Just like saying, God help me. Mukovga ti mana fasha. God said, you want me to help you? You need to recognize your seed. What do you have in your house? The woman said, Second Kings chapter 4. I think verse 2 or verse 3. He says, the widow said, nothing but a jar of oil. There are many people listening to me tonight. Just like a woman. If God will show up to you tonight. You may still be saying, I don't have anything. You know some people will say nothing, nothing. Zero. Can I take you a little deeper? Sorry? I said, can I take you a little deeper? In Genesis chapter 1. 
The Bible says, God created in the beginning. Verse 1 of Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. What does void mean? Zero. Nothing. God created something out of nothing. In the realm of God, nothing is something. Hey. Come on. Is somebody hearing me today? I said in the realm of God, nothing is something. God specializes at moving people from zero to one. If you understand... <laughs> If you understand mathematics, you know in mathematics they tell you that zero is zero. It's not true. <laughs> it makes natural sense. But it doesn't make spiritual sense. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness covered the face of the earth. But the Spirit of God was moving over everything. When you introduce the Holy Ghost, zero is something. Nothing becomes something. You can move from zero to one. Some people think you have to move from one to ten. From one to ten. But you see, real faith can move you from zero to one and to ten. People think when you are zero, then you are stranded. And you have nothing. See, when you have zero in your hand, and the Holy Ghost is in you. You are like God in Genesis chapter 1. You can, you can move from 0 to 1. Shout amen, somebody. Amen, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. I want to be sure that you are getting me. I said, I want to be sure you are getting me. What you are hearing tonight can transform your life radically. When you look at your bank account and there's nothing there, that's zero. You can't be stranded with zero. Tell yourself zero is something in, in the realm of God. The widow said nothing, but the jar of her. You know, some people, all they can see is nothing. Some people can see, but, but something small. I don't know where you are. Whether you are nothing or, or, or something small. Wherever you are, God has a plan for you. <laughs> you can move you from where you are to where you want you to be. Can somebody stay with me tonight? Somebody mm. tell your neighbor for me, say I can never be stranded again. Say I will never be stranded again. Say I will never be stranded again. Say I'm loaded with seed. Say spiritually I'm loaded. Mentally I'm loaded. Say in my body I'm loaded. I'm a walking seed. I'm a running seed. I'm running towards my death. Shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
So when you recognize you many that you are a walking, running sea. You stop behaving like my Liberian friends. Boundaries of sea. Young men filled with sea. But disillusioned because of what they have gone through. And just walking aimlessly all over the place. You see people all around Bujumbura. Bujumbura. Filled with sea. People in Kigali. Abani Kigali. Full of sea. Bujumbura. People in Lagos, Nigeria. Abani Lagos, Nigeria. Full of sea. Bujumbura. People in Ethiopia. Full of sea. Ethiopia. But they are not recognizing their sea. Elisha told the widow woman, Go borrow vessels. Go genda utira masafuri ya kani wikoreto. Wuzo imbuto. All you need is space. Hey, chukenda ye. Nikivanta chukushira mizombuto. Hey. Is somebody still with me tonight? Haru muna kiri kumena njakuri mugorova. The same word that Elijah spoke to that woman. That's what I've come to say to you. Nikio jambo na jeku kukira wewe. Burundi, you are full of sea. Abarundi, muzimbuto. Go borrow vessels. Genda utira ibi koresho. Borrow not of fear. Uvisa nutira wike. Borrow from all your neighbors. Uva tira kuwamani ba wewe wose. Borrow vessel from Kenya. Genda utira ibi koresho. Borrow vessel from Kenya. Genda. Genda utira ibi koresho na mubuganda. Borrow vessel from Nigeria. Genda utira ibi koresho na Nigeria. Because God is about to pour out something upon you. Kuku imana ite gu yego sukayo muri fito ibi koresho. Come on, come on. This conference is prophetic. Murazi iki gikorane ni chomo yangu vugi. Because you are borrowing vessel from Kenya. Kuko mnaza ni wikore sio vifuye muri Kenya. Vifuye muri Ethiopia. Vifuye muri New Zealand. Vifuye muri Burundi. Mnaza ni wikore sio vifuye anuhosi. You understand what I'm talking about? Murata orifanya kwa ndavuga. It means that God is about to do something. Bisikura ngi mana itegu yangu kore kin. When you see strange vessels showing up in your house. Iyo wanya iki kore sio vifuye shi mzuri yawe. Bithando kani. Get ready for multiplication. Unva wii tegu re kugirizwa. Get ready for multiplication. Hallelujah. I said get ready for multiplication. Nari vuzango wii tegu re haru kugirizwa kuri kukurava. Come on, come on. What you have is about to multiply. Umva, if you marry me, if you say we have the tango, you could go his way. The grace of God on your life is about to catch fire. Oh, no, be man, I could not see my God. The tango, you go fat, can't move it off. Ma krada bose, le na zoka kama ya zovrahade. Iketo proda galande. Le na zoka tele frahizo. Thank you, Jesus. Le zovrahada. Lift your two hands, everyone. Do you begin to fear? Munu esa do you begin to fear? I prophesy over somebody's life here. Harumu no. My God will open your eyes to see. Imani gie kukugura masu kugirangubone. You will no longer see yourself seedless. Nuzo kuigera wibo na mungwara. In the name of Jesus. Mwizina jayesu. I said in the name of Jesus. Bukati mwizina jayesu. My God opens your eyes to see. Imana yanje yugura masu ya kugirubone. In the name of Jesus. Uwone mbuto zawe mwizina jayesu. Seeds of great ideas. Uwone ifye umvira wikushikana kure. Seeds of vision. Uwone mayere kwa. Ahaha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can I say this to somebody here? I see God opening your eyes. God is opening your eyes. Let me tell you what I feel like to say to you. Let me tell you what I feel like to say to you. Let me tell you what I feel like to say to you. Let me tell you what I feel like to say to you. Let me tell you what I feel like to say to you. Let me tell you what I feel like to say to you. Let me tell you what I feel like to say to you. Let me tell you what I feel like to say to you. Let me tell you what I feel like to say to you. Let me tell you what I feel like to say to you. Everyone here call into the academia. Call into real estate. With solutions in IT. Solutions in IT. You create apps and softwares. What you need with your 
What you have will command attention around the world. Can I tell you what I'm talking about? Sometimes I will sit with young men in my office in Lagos. They come with the seed of their idea. In the month of May, I was in Uganda. And I saw a building. I saw a signboard on the building. A signboard on the building. And I saw the name of the company. This company is now going around Africa. The young man that started it came to my office showed me the seed. The I sat with him for about one hour incubating the idea. And prophesied over him. The company started in Lagos. The company started in I even gave some seed money. I think he gave me like 4% of the shares of the company. That company is now in Lagos. In Ghana. Uganda. 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 The young man himself lives in Dubai now. Managing the Dubai office. That space. Go borrow vessels. <laughs> My Jesus I said, Go Christ. borrow vessels. <laughs> I wanted to do something for me quickly. Put your hand on the shoulder of your neighbor. I'm going to give you one minute. I wanted to speak into the seed in their life. New seeds to come alive. Can we do that in one minute? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in understanding. Say, let every seed that is dormant here. Let it start to come alive. Father, open the eyes of my brother. Open the eyes of my sister. Every seed that is in dormant Come alive in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody pray over your neighbor right now. I see seeds coming alive. I see ideas coming alive. I see the heavens open over you. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody pray over your neighbor right now. I see seeds coming alive. I see ideas coming alive. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You will no longer be stranded. I said you will no longer be stranded. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Somebody shout a big amen. Hallelujah. Please you may have your seat. I have seven more minutes. I have actually not gone halfway my notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm going to condense the remaining things I have to say to these seven minutes. Can I quickly touch on space? So I can balance this house. Elisha told the woman Go borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. Because you need space. For your seed. When the devil wants to attack a believer. And he realizes that he can't attack you directly. He starts to make you accept. 
your lack of space has been normal. But the Bible says we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. So he doesn't take advantage of us. The devil likes to contend for space. Listen to this. Some of the greatest wars fought in, on the earth have been fought on space. Contention for space. Contention for space. Till Jesus comes, most wars will still be based on space. That's why in Genesis chapter 12, when the God of the covenant came to Abraham, Abraham, it was to give him space. Live where you are. Go to where I will show you. Somebody listen to me today. Ujumbura can no longer contain you. God is enlarging your territory. You are the only one that can stop yourself. Can I tell you the truth? Visa is nothing. The earth is the Lord. And the fullness thereof. And everything that is within it. If I'm a child of God. I'm a global citizen. Everywhere God created. I'm supposed to be able to tread on it. So I recognize that countries have boundaries. Countries have boundaries. But a child of God should not be living. The Bible says, as they move from place to place, they suffered no one to do them wrong. Saying, touch not my anointing. And do my prophets no harm. So as you move from place to place. Lift up your head, O ye gays. And be lifted every everlasting door. And let the king of glory come. Who is the king of glory? The Lord mighty in He is a child of God. You carry the glory of God. You should be able to enter anywhere. God gives wisdom for penetration. Yeah. So mm. we can penetrate territories. Yeah. Mm. Our light must shine into every place. When you think about yourself, don't think Burundi. Think global. As I think global. Think global. The prophet told the widow. He said, go borrow vessels. From everywhere. All your neighbors. Borrow not a field. <laughs> it's only your mind that can limit you. From borrowing a little. Little. The devil contends for space. When a woman gets pregnant, in Nigeria where I came from, sometimes they will say there's a growth in the womb. It's called fibroid. It's very common in black women. Sometimes as the Child is growing. The fibroid is growing. Yeah. So it's contending for the child. Yeah. And 
I pray over anyone here. Whatever is contending for space in your womb. Every woman. Whether it's a growth, a cyst, a fiber. I speak to them to dry up. In the name of Jesus. We take authority over anything that God has not planted. That may be growing in your body. Dry up in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. About a year ago, I was preaching for a friend in Portacot, Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, Gateway Church in Portacot. Awesome. I preach a similar message today. Prayed over the congregation. Two days later, Pastor George called me. He said, Three women in our church have had fibro disappear. I pray a repeat of that to this congregation. Whatever is competing for fruitfulness in your body, it starts to leave your body right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen somebody. Let me quickly talk about mental space. Many people don't have mental space. Because of issues that they carry on their mind. No mental space to incubate ideas. This is 2023. You need to delete all the issues of 2022. Delete, delete, delete. Futa, futa, futa. Delete, delete, delete. Yeah. Young people here, relationship issues. Boyfriend says, I'm not doing it again. Girlfriend says, I found somebody else. And so when you are sleeping right now, you are still dreaming about the girlfriend. God wants to show you a new idea. Hallelujah. Forget about the girl that is gone. Delete the boy that is gone. Free your mind for the Holy Ghost. So you can put new ideas that will launch you into your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Free of space in your heart. Come into 2023 light. You know when you when when you are traveling within Africa. Africans like load. When you see black people at the airport. Excess luggage. Excess luggage. Excess luggage. And in real life, we also go around with excess luggage. And God bring it. Yeah, and God is saying, create space. Create space for me. Empty the bag. I want to fill you afresh with it. Let me end up with a favorite story. And I believe this will help somebody. I obviously cannot finish this message. But I will end with this story. My time is up. My time is up. But if you give me two minutes, I will end with this story. And I'm going to say a prayer. I need to get ready for the prayer. One of the greatest prayers a believer can pray. I'm going to lead you through it in a minute. So I read in a book many years ago. A man went to the lake. You read the road. 
I read in a book. Narasomye mu gitabo haraheze imyaka. The story of a man. Yari inkuru y'umuntu. Who went to the lake? Yagiye ahantu kukiyaga. What's the name of the lake here? Ike a Tanganyika. Tanganyika. Eh, yagiye ngo kukiyaga nkuko iyo jogiyaga cyacu Tanganyika. So imagine one guy in Bujumbura. Nero uyumvira umwe mu bantu Bujumbura giye kukiyaga Tanganyika. He went to Tanganyika. Acaja kukiyaga. And sat this on the, at the shore of the lake. Hama yicara ku ntengera zikiyaga. And he was fishing. Yari kwa raroba. So he let down his. Ero uh, araterera uh, araterera ya msaiwe. Yeah, the hook and all that. Mm. And then he will bring out a fish. Kugira ngo ashore ku kurobifi. Yeah. He will look at the fish. Yari kwa ararobifi yari kwa raira. He will put some in his bucket. Agachatora ya fi afashe agashira mu kadobo kiwe. Or some big ones. Hariko binini binini. He will put back into the water. Ya <laughs> Arobye ntonye yashira mu kadobo arobye binini bidakwigwayo yaca bisubiza mu manzi why is man I just Maybe he knows the story so the guy who put the big ones back Pero nini yaca zisubiza mu manzi there was another guy hari ho yundi muntu who sat a bit of a far off yari yicaye kure gatonya ya hari he was watching the young man yari kwa raba wa munga kiri muto after a while haitse umwanya he went to meet the young man aragenda aramurahaba what exactly are you doing aramugira ngo uri ko kora iki are you here to fish? The guy said yes. He said there must be a deep philosophy to what you are doing. Because I saw that you have been throwing back some into the water. And they look big. The man said there's no deep philosophy here. He said before I left home. I measured my frying pan. What is frying pan? Na, my pot. Where you can. Ati imbere yuko fa muhira yabanje gupima ipano afise muhiringe ningani ipano murayinzi. So 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 he picked a stick. Yera wanje na yipima inge ningana. He said you see this stick. Acha mwa turabona akagati. This is the diameter. Yeri afasha gati acha pima diameter yipano. He said any fish that is longer than this. Thing. I throw them back into the water. Because my frying pan at all cannot handle it. So that is what I'm doing. The man looked at him. Just the way I'm looking at some people here now. Because there's a way you can position in life. That you will not be able to take hold of opportunities. Because you think they are too big for you. Uh, they, they, some of us have frying pan at home. But you know the most important frying pan. Is your mind. When opportunities come to you. You use your mind to measure them. And when they look too big for you, you throw them back into the ocean. You just throw them back there. When God wants to help a man or a woman, He breaks your frying pan in the place of prayer and study of the word of God. God wants to shatter your frying pan. And give you a bigger frying pan. So you can handle what is coming your way. Burundi have come to announce to you that something big is coming your way. You need a bigger frying pan to handle it. You have to come out from where you used to be. You have to come out from where you used to be. Space for the next move Agura, of God. Agura, 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 Agura. Next space for the next thing that God wants. Don't let your mind hold you back. Romans 12 and verse 2. Don't be conformed to this world. But be transformed. By the renewing of your mind. Somebody say, Lord, increase my mind. Lord, enlarge my mind. Give me mental space. Give me emotional space. 
Give me spiritual space. It's time to enlarge to the right and to the left. Let us lift your two hands to Jesus. Cry out to Him tonight. Father, enlarge my capacity. Enlarge my capacity. Give me capacity for my opportunity. 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 Lift your voice and pray tonight. Somebody lift your voice and pray. Oh,